Fractures of the Capitulum Fractures of the Capitulum are rare and usually occur in the coronal plane and can be difficult to diagnose. Fracture of the Capitulum is similar to half a fracture of the distal femur. Both are coronal, both are difficult to diagnose, and the X-ray may miss the fracture. Failure to diagnose the fracture and to treat it appropriately can lead to poor patient outcome. Classification of capitular fractures. Brian and Mori classification. Type 1. It is a large fragment of bone and articular cartilage, sometimes with trochlear involvement. Type 2 is a shear fracture of the articular cartilage. The articular cartilage is separated with a small shell of bone. Type 3, comminuted fracture of the capitulum. Type 4 is McKee modification. Coronal shear fracture that extends medially to include the capitulum and trochlea. You can see double bubble or double arc on the lateral x-ray of the elbow. One arc represents the capitulum and the other arc is the lateral ridge of the trochlea. The double arc sign is pathognomonic finding of capitular fracture and usually seen in the lateral elbow x-rays. In more than 50% of the time, capitulum fracture may be associated with other injuries such as radial head fracture or lateral undercollateral ligament injuries. Fracture of the capitulum can cause mechanical block to movement of the elbow. Imaging. The fracture can be seen on the lateral x-ray of the elbow. However, CT scan is helpful in showing the fracture adequately. Treatment. Non-operative treatment for non-displaced fracture. You'll give the patient a splint for less than three weeks, followed by a range of motion. Surgery, open reduction internal fixation is done for displaced fractures. When do you do fragment excision? We rarely excise the capitulum, but you may get into this situation if the fragment is displaced and causing symptoms and most of the fragment is cartilage attached to a thin piece of bone and you couldn't fix the fragment. You will try to fix it first before you excise it. We also will excise type 3 fracture that's comminuted and displaced, especially if there's a block to movement of the elbow. Small displaced insignificant fractures can be excised if it is causing pain or mechanical block to elbow motion. Excision of a large fragment of the capitulum can create a problem of developing arthritis or instability, especially if the medial collateral ligament is injured. When do you do total elbow arthroplasty? when there is a comminuted fracture of the capitulum that extend to the medial column and the fracture is unreconstructable and the patient is old. How do you do the open reduction and the internal fixation? The ideal visualization of the fracture is usually provided by a lateral approach, Kaplan or Coker approach. The patient is usually in the supine position. Elevate the common extensor tendons and the capsule anteriorly of the lateral column and use headless compression screws from anteriorly to posteriorly. The fracture is partial articular 
and vertical shear going from anteriorly to posteriorly will allow excellent compression and stability of the fracture. Countersink the screws. Bury the screw heads beneath the articular cartilage anteriorly. We're going to try to avoid destabilizing the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. We'll try to make the dissection more anterior to the equator of the radial head. And we're going to try to avoid disruption of the capitellum blood supply that comes from the posterolateral area. So stay anteriorly and you will avoid these two problems. Complication of capitellar fractures. Elbow stiffness. Surgery to fix the capitellar fractures will help in gaining the functional range of motion, but the patient will have residual stiffness. Surgery is probably better than no surgery, but the reoperation rate is high due to residual stiffness of the elbow. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.